Today we're going to start on the second workshop, which is a drainage area delineation workshop. So I did include on D2L a second CAD file. It's called Workshop 2 Drainage Areas. Now, I'm, I don't really plan to put new, add new CAD files all the time because they're actually going to be the same file. However, because our computers were running really slowly with the PDFs, because they were big PDFs, I just converted the PDFs to images and then just replaced them with images in the, in the file. Now, I don't want you to have to do that right now because you know it's, you got scale and bring them, uh, it's too much. So I just did it myself and then uploaded that on D2L. And now you have the CAD file with images instead of a PDF. And that way it should run a little bit faster on your computer. So make sure you download that CAD file. I think once you download it and open it, it's going to look like this. Okay. Um, because I, I did hide the project area layer because we're not going to need it for now. Right now we don't really care about our project area. We will care about it, but not, not right now. But this is what you should have right now. So I just want to make sure that everyone in the group ha has this. Everybody have this so far in the group? Yes, yes. You have this? Yes. You, were you able to fix your issue? Yeah, I got it. OK. Does that group have it? OK. What about that group in the end and this group? OK, good. Awesome. All right. Drainage area delineation. This is the foundation of water research is engineering. You need this to know how much water is going to flow into your system. You need this to identify where your your construction is going to impact uh, you know its surroundings. This is a crucial part of water research engineering, and you need to be good at it, really good at it. Um, sometime after I finished my master's, I got a job at Dubray. I worked, I worked at Dubray for about a year, and the entire year, what I did was delineate drainage areas. So I delineated thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of drainage areas over the course of that year, and I like to say that I got pretty good at it, okay? And I want you to get pretty good at them too, okay? It requires practice. It's kind of like drawing, you know, it, it requires a bit of practice, but the good thing about drainage areas is that the more you, you work with them, the more familiarized you get with them, and then the faster they come to you. Right, so at first, when I train my interns, it may take them like an hour to draw a big, like 40 square mile drainage area for like a huge river or stream. It may take them hours and hours and hours to do it. The second time, it takes half the time. The third time, it takes half the time of that. And then now, you know, after like a few months of working with me, they can draw drainage areas pretty much on the fly. And that's why I want you. That's where I want you to be at the end of the semester, where you can just look at at a map and just draw it at, at, on the fly. Now, before we actually start drawing drainage areas. I do need to explain a little bit of what's behind drainage areas. This is another file. It's just a little bit easier to read and a little bit smaller. It's a different area, of course. This is Kentucky. Um, first of all, is everybody familiar with topographic or contour maps? OK, so let's just make sure that we're all familiar with it, not just some of us, but all of us. Essentially, a topographic map, it just shows the topography of a land. And it shows that topography by identifying points of equal elevation through these lines called contours. So you see these nice squiggly lines? These are called contours. They are points that have equal elevation, which means you can see this line has 600. The elevation at this point where I am uh, dragging my mouse is 600. You can follow that line. At any point in that line, the elevation will be 600. In this case, it's feet from median sea level, so 600 feet from median sea level. Okay. So this, these contour lines tell us the elevation of certain points. So it allow, they allow us to visualize you know, a three-dimensional region. We can actually visualize it in a two-dimensional map. Of course, this is very, very crucial, especially for anything that involves land development. But So you do need to understand them. Now, with contour lines, because each line represents a point with equal elevation, that means that the neighboring lines are going to have different elevations. Okay, so we can look at, at these maps. Usually, these maps have um, have new elevations every couple couple ten, twenty to one hundred feet. So, for example, we have a seven hundred line that's identified. We have an eight hundred line that's identified. So, I'm going to go with eight hundred line. That's a little bit easier. Yeah, eight hundred is a little bit easier. You have this eight hundred line here and here. What that means is that this line, this kind of like bolded line, has an elevation of eight hundred feet from mean sea level. Now this line has 600 feet from, elevation of 600 feet from mean sea level. What that means is that any line in between the 600 and the 800 line is going to be some number in between that. Okay? 
I can't really put elevations at every single contour line in this map, otherwise they will be unreadable. So normally you'll see them, the, ba the, the base elevations there kind of like the more important ones. In this case, every 100 feet, there is a, a, a note where you can see the actual number. Some maps that you have are going to have contour labels, like every 10 feet, every 20 feet. If it's very, very detailed contours, you'll have labels every one foot, right? But for these bigger maps, you typically have hundreds of feet or, or around that, that, that much to actually be able to visualize them and use them. First thing with contour maps, uh, if they are designed correctly, which in most cases they will be, each line, each contour line needs to have the same interval, which means that if one line is 600 and the one next to it is 605, then the next one has to be 610. Okay, so they all have, they always have to have equal intervals, and that helps us to figure out what these elevations are, even though we don't have them identified. So from this bold 600 line to this bold 800 line, we have 200. You can actually see another bold line here, which is identified down here as a 700 line. So you know that this bold line is going to be 700. So you can say, well, this is 700. We have one, two, three, four, five before reaching 800. So what's the interval in each contour? 20, 20 foot, right? 20 feet, right? Because we know that every contour has a difference in elevation of 20 feet from the contours next to it. So let me zoom in a little bit and let's focus on this contour line. Remember, this is the 700 line, this is the 800 line. What elevation would you say this contour has? 760. Say that again? 760. 760, does everybody agree with that? Yeah. Okay, good. If I move one step to the right, what elevation does this contour have? 780. And one step to the left? 740. Okay, good. So we understand contour maps in general, right? Don't worry if you don't understand it fully. You will get familiarized with them. And once you get really familiarized with them, you're actually going to be able to visualize it just by looking at them. Maybe even now you may be able to visualize them a little bit, but the more familiarized you get with contours, the better you start to visualize them. Now, I want to take us now to the actual water resources part. We care about where rainfall goes. Rain is going to fall on the ground, and it's going to travel through the ground. Okay. Right now, let, let's forget about infiltration. We'll worry about that later. Right now, I care about where the rainfall goes. So if a drop of rain falls on this 760-foot contour line, in which direction do you think it's going to travel? Down. Down, right? So that means that my drop of rain, and let me just draw it here. I have a... Oops. If I have a drop of rain that falls here, I know for sure that it cannot travel anywhere in this direction, right? Why not? It's up. Rain cannot go up. Which means that if my rainfall falls here, my raindrop falls here, it has to travel. I don't care which direction yet, but right now what I know is it has to travel somewhere in this direction, somewhere down. Now the question is, how do you know where? Right? You know it's going to travel down, so how do you know where? Um, what is this? Water. Somebody said a keyword there. Is, is that louder? The steepest. The steepest, right? Yeah. That is contour line. Exactly, right? You 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 have your raindrop. You're gonna want to travel through the steepest slope because gravity is driving you. So the steepest slope, you'll have the highest effect of gravity, which means you'll travel through the steepest slope. Now here's the thing. With contour lines, how do you know where the steepest slope is? The closer, the closer together, right? The closer together, the steeper the slope. Remember, the contour lines have equal elevation differences between them. So if two contour lines are very, very far away from each other, then you know that it's going to take a long time to actually go from, the, from those two elevations, which means that the slope has to be flatter. But if two contour lines are very close to each other, then you know that, okay, that it, it's actually really quick. I can go from one elevation to a lower elevation really quickly. That means the slope must be very steep. So my water line will always travel through the steepest slopes. There is a general, um, I would say like, like a general rule. I, I don't want to call it a rule, but in general, if you're not sure, just remember that because those contour lines represent points of equal elevation, what, and water is always trying to go through the steepest slope, the steepest slope will always be perpendicular to your contour line. So your water drop will always try to travel perpendicular to the contour line. Now, not all contour lines are not parallel to each other, which means that once it travels from one contour line to another, it's going to have to move around, right, to stay perpendicular. But in general, try to keep your water lines perpendicular. I, I'm going to draw, and this is this is actually not the, the CAD file you have, but we will work on the CAD file you have. I just want to give you some simple examples. But I'm going to draw 
what's called a flow path line. So I want to draw just a little a line that simply signifies the path of my water drop. So I'm going to say that my water drop falls right at the center. Which direction should it go? Right, right, and then up and to the right. Remember, in order to determine the steepest slope, you're only looking at the next contour line. You don't look at what happens after, only the, the one that's immediately after. To the right, to the right, to the right. To the right. Oh. And it's a trick question. It's a trick question because we're actually right at the center. We're equal distance from the next contour line. Remember, the next contour line will be this one. So we don't really know. It could go any, either way. And here's where the fun part about hydrology comes. There are points where water can go either way. And those points are our watershed boundaries. Okay, so we will identify those points eventually. Right now, let me just give you, let me just say, you're all saying right, so I'll say right too. Let's say it goes this way. From this point, in which, let me disable my dynamic. There we go. From this point, in which direction does the water line travel? Same direction. Same direction, like this? Yeah. Is, that, is that good? Yeah. Okay. And then from this point, in which direction does it travel? Same direction. Same direction like this? Yeah. Okay. Do, we, do I keep with the same direction? Down, down, down to the right. Down to the right a little bit, so it's perpendicular? Like this? I don't know, you, you tell me, right? Let's go. <laughs> Let's, okay. I, I would actually say, well, if I want it to be perpendicular, it may be something like this, I would say. And then maybe this one like this, like this. And then eventually, you may actually reach a point where you actually, I actually don't know where my water line would travel. Would it go this way or this way? You may actually have to reach a point where your water line just goes like in that little nose, okay? So whenever you get to a point that's like concave downward, so it's concave pointing downward, or yeah, convex up or concave, concave downward, then water will typically want to travel through these points. These are called valleys. Okay, whenever you see those, two, those points, these are called valleys. Water is going to try to travel down those valleys. Okay? You don't have to memorize this. Eventually, water is going to reach a water body. And from there, I think it's easy, right? We know that water is going to follow that water body. In this case, my water body travels this way, so my water line will just keep traveling down through my water body. And I don't have to care about anything else because the water body is already delineated there for me. Now, this is not a watershed. This is actually just the path of a flow path. In this section, in this workshop, we're actually not going to focus on flow paths. We want to focus on watersheds. But I want you to understand flow paths because drawing flow paths is a little bit easier for drawing watersheds. Uh, it's, it's an easier method for, for drawing watersheds. I am going to look here at this point. Normally, I want to focus on high points. Whenever I, I start my flow path, you always start from the highest point. So you want to focus on high points. How do I know that this is one of my high points? It's not the high point. The high point is here. But how do I know this, that this can be considered a high point? there's nothing inside there. Yeah, there's no more contours, right? It's like all your contours leading up to this circle are increasing in elevation, increasing, increasing, increasing. We get to this final contour and there's nothing else. What that means is that we have a high point. Because we have a high point, we know that at somewhere inside that contour, water's going to be split. Water can go in either way. So I can say, for example, that if my rain, if my raindrop falls a little bit to the left, in which direction is it most likely to travel? To the left. To the left. So I can say that my water path is going to be something like this. Okay. I could also say that if my raindrop falls a little bit to the right, in which direction is it going to travel? To the right. To the right. So what's happening here? This high point actually serves as a break point, where every, every water drop that falls to one side of that high point is going to go in one direction. Every water, every raindrop that falls to the other side of this high point is going to go in the other direction. Okay. This is called a boundary line or a watershed boundary line because we know that water will be broken off in different directions when it falls on this point. We really care about where water goes. Okay. And one of, the reasons, one of the ways we can determine where water goes is by drawing what's called a watershed. This is a word that I've used last week and the week before, and that I said, don't think about it yet, I'll explain it, now it's time to explain it. A watershed is essentially a region that collects water and drains it to a common point. Okay? 
Think of your toilet, for example. Right? Your toilet can collect water, but eventually it all goes to the same point. Okay? I, I couldn't think of any other example. I don't know why I could. I should have thought of something better. But essentially, any region that collects water and drains it all to the same point is a watershed. In this case, right, in, in this particular case, because we have this division point, we have some water going in one direction, some water going in the other direction. We can assume that possibly this high point is, divi is the dividing line between two watersheds. Because rain rainwater that falls on one side is going to drain at one point, rainwater that falls on the other side drains at the other point. Now, watersheds really depend on where that drainage point is. Because if you set your drainage point downstream and up, then the world is one watershed or something, right? Then, because you can say, well, this is going to drain to this river, but this river actually drains to the Chattahoochee. The Chattahoochee eventually somehow ends up in the Atlantic, right? So your point, your outlet point, is very important to define when you are determining a watershed. I'm going to walk you through a simple process of, of delineating watersheds. And you'll need practice. It's OK if you don't get it the first time. Just with practice, it'll improve. And that's kind of why I want you to submit your project progress. But I would like to say, uh, let me change this color to red so it's a little bit more visible. That's a little bit better. I would like to say that I want to find the watershed. That I would like to find the watershed for this point right here. I'm going to draw a little point here. Do a little hatch. There we go. I want to draw a watershed for this point right here. In other words, I want to know how much water actually passes through that point. It might, let's say that at that point, uh, I'm going to put a flow meter or something. And I'm going to measure the amount of water that's actually draining and passing through that point. We can figure what that water is by delineating a watershed. Let's do a little bit of a conceptual, uh, conceptual question. Based on how the contours are arranged here, based on how this water body is drawn, in which direction do you think water passing through this point is draining? Is it draining towards the south or towards the north? South. south. South, right? Because we know that we have higher points up here and lower points down here, which means that it's draining towards the south. Water always follows the direction of gravity. We were saying kind of like left, right. I don't want to use those terms. I do want you to start getting used to saying north, south, east, west. Because those terms will become important, especially when we're dealing with maps that are not exactly uh, set with the north arrow up, which can happen sometimes depending on your project. Okay, so let's get used to saying north, south, east, west in order to actually identify our points. The way we can draw watersheds, um, and I'm going to apologize in advance because I kind of do this automatically, my interns do this automatically. Teaching it, it's like you got to find easier ways, easier methods to actually teach this. And this is not how I approach watershed delineation. It's just a method that other people teach. And you know, if it works, then it works. But one of the ways we can draw watersheds is by first identifying in which direction is water draining. You know that water is draining south. We already agreed with that. Which means that the watershed will have to include the stuff up here in the north. How much of it? Well, we don't know yet. But that's where our knowledge of high points comes into play. If we could identify more or less some high points that are in the north area, we could probably determine where that watershed is being split. Right? So we can kind of go come up with the watershed limits. So just by looking into this map, where can you identify some high points that you think may be splitting that watershed? Big circles. Okay, I, I, I guess I need a better way to <laughs> big circle to the west. west of, or to the west. To yeah, the west? west of 800. Okay, so here? Yeah. Okay, so this could be a high point, right? Because we can see that any water that drains in this direction is not going to end up in this point. Any, any water that drains towards the west is going to end up somewhere else, right? It's not going to end up down here. Good. But the water that drains towards the east could end up down here. Good. We don't know yet, but it could. Can we identify any other high points? The one south of that. The one south of that? Yeah. So this one? Yes. Okay. Same thing here, right? We know that any we know that any water that drains towards the west is going to end up somewhere else. It's, you can draw the flow path yourself and travel somewhere else. Any water that drains towards the east may actually end up at our point. Good. What else? The ones on the east. Can you say that again? Those right there on the east. Which ones? Uh, Railroad, North, North. 
you have that. Like here? Okay. We do have a high point here. Now, I'm going to ask you a question, Brandon. This is a high point, so you are right. It is a high point. But it looks like everything goes back down to the river. Yeah. If you look at this high point, anything that drains towards the north kind of ends up in a river, right? It's going to end up in a point. Anything that drains towards the south still ends up in our, in our point. So I wouldn't really consider this point a watershed division because we know well, anything, something could drain towards the, towards the east, but here at the east, it needs to go north or south. And in both cases, it ends up at a point. Do you, you, does that make sense? It's not just about selecting high points. You actually have to figure out which high points are actually dividing my flow, right? So very, very good observation, Breno. I would just say, in this case, it, everything is actually ending up at our point. This is tricky. Don't worry about it. It, it takes time. but. Do you have, can you identify some high points that could be divided right, north to the east, east of that? North, oh, yeah, oh, yeah and northeast. Northeast yeah. of that? That's the one I was looking at. This one? Yeah. Okay. So maybe this one. Okay, maybe this one makes sense because anything towards the east is going to end up somewhere else at another river branch. Anything towards the west could end up at our branch. Okay, that does make sense. These, uh, these things are actually roads, and we're going to talk about roads later because they kind of mess up our watershed delineation. So let's talk about them later. Okay. All right, so we seem to agree on some high points. Can we maybe identify maybe one more high point that could divide our flow? North, the section north of our northernmost west point. So north of this yeah, one? Yeah, go north. I think it's going to go that one right there. Here? Okay. Yeah. Northernmost. <laughs> I don't know how that. Our northernmost west point. All right. <laughs> I think this makes sense. Let's see. Anything that drains towards the southwest is going to end up in a different branch, right? Good. Anything that ends uh, northeast is going to end up. Is this our branch? No, this is a different yeah, branch. Sorry. However, anything that drains to the south um, southeast does end up in our branch. So this is a watershed break. In fact, this is actually breaking multiple watersheds, not just two. So good. Good observation. I like, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just saying, I see what's going on. All right, good. I'd like for you to practice a little bit, and maybe not here, but when you do have time when you're working on your project, maybe practice by drawing those flow path lines, trying to draw the path of the, of, of, of the flow of the water drop. And when you do that, you, you kind of start to identify, okay, it looks like it's breaking off here. Sometimes I see a point and I think it's going to split my watershed, but then when I end up drawing my flow pipeline, I see that I actually end up returning to my point. So it's not always something that you see at once. So don't feel bad if you didn't see them all at once. In the end, they're going to end up in your point. And you do need to practice a little bit to actually get there, okay? Now we've identified those high points, those break points, but that's not really our watershed. We want to know where our watershed is, is, deli is delimited at. So what we're going to do is we can draw lines that connect our outfall, which is right here, this is our drainage point, to these high points. Now, I can't just draw a line like this. It's not really, that's not really how it works. Instead, my line needs to tell me right where the flow is, is being split. Now, here's a trick I, I like to use. When I drew my flow path, like if I'm drawing a flow path, I say that the water always tries to travel perpendicular to the contours, and if you see this little valley, it's gonna follow this valley, right? So the flow path, the, the little rainwater drop follows the valley. The watershed line is the exact opposite because the watershed line is where the flow is split, so it would be the exact opposite of a flow path. The watershed line doesn't follow the valley, the watershed line follows the ridges. So when you see those curves on the other side, where they are concave upward, those are called ridges, and those are what the watershed line follows. Let me make this circle a little bit, uh, let me patch, make this circle a little bit clearer so that we can actually uh, see what we're doing. I can say, I can start here, and then move towards my next contour, and then we're basically doing the opposite of a flow path. The flow path, we start up and we start moving downwards, here we start down and we start and we move upwards. And instead of following the valleys, we are now trying to follow the ridges. So once I get to a ridge, I can follow that ridge. Remember to try to stay perpendicular to your contours. It doesn't have to be exactly perpendicular. Sometimes you have to move it around a little bit, but move upwards almost perpendicular to your contours. 
here I have a problem, where's my next contour? It's like up here. So I know that I'm not gonna be exactly perpendicular, but you know, you can give it your best shot, okay? And eventually, here's the thing, because you're moving up and up and up, eventually you're gonna reach your high point, right? Because if you're just moving upwards, 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 you're eventually gonna reach that high point. Notice that there's actually no other way I could have done this, right? Because I could have moved somewhere else, right? I, let, let's say I accidentally started wrong. Let's say I started here. Uh, let me just draw it. Let's say I accidentally started here incorrectly, but I just keep moving up and up and up. Eventually, I'm still going to reach my high point, right? So those tiny mistakes are not going to affect or influence this watershed greatly. Once we reach the high point, and let me make this a little bit thicker so you can actually see it. A little bit too thick. Okay. Once we reach the high point, we know that we have reached that point where the watershed is kind of split off. Oops, there we go. And at this high point, we have a problem. Well, there's nowhere else to go up. And I said, well, we gotta go up and up and up. It's okay, once you reach your first high point, you now have to travel to your next high point, which will be this one. In a case like this, right, you know that anything that falls towards the west of this high point is gonna drain to one side, not our watershed, right? Anything that falls towards the east of this high point is gonna drain towards our watershed. So how would you split up this high point? Right down the middle. Yeah. Right down the middle, right? Yeah. That makes the most sense, okay? So try, try to keep doing that right down the middle, okay? And here, you have two different con two, you have two contours, but they're actually the same line. You don't realize it, but um, you may not realize it, but if you actually zoom out a little bit, you notice that this is actually the same line. These two are the same line. What that means is that when you have these two same lines, and this is going down in this direction, down in this direction, that means that this too can be treated like a high point, which means that this is actually going to split water in two directions. So as you travel to the next high point, you may get to these points where you have contours of the same elevation. In that case, just split them down the middle, just like what you did with the high point. And from there, you can keep traveling until you reach your high point. Here, I have another problem. Okay, the next step is to try to find the next high point, which I would say is this one. Okay. So I can try to follow this line. Again, as perpendicular as I can to my contours, it won't be perfect. Here, these two contours have the same elevation, so I want to try to split them down the middle and continue. You'll have a lot of practice with this, don't worry about it. I am going to try to speed up a little bit just so that we can get to the actual practice workshop part. And then from here, I need to get to my next high point. Seth, where's the next high point? Northwest. Right, it's, a, it's, it's to the east. Oh, it's to the east? Yeah, it's to the east. Actually. Okay. Um, so it's this one. Uh, yeah, right here, okay? We, we can't really go northwest because remember, this is a, a different branch of the river. Ah. It no longer goes to our. So from here to here, I gotta be careful, right? I'm gonna have to try to go perpendicular to my contours, but sometimes I'm gonna have to follow these ridges, okay? I'm not gonna expect you to do this perfectly the first try, but I will give you feedback so that you can improve it for future tries, okay? Then we go to our next high point, but look at that, there's no more high points left. So what do I do now? Go back, yeah. go back to the beginning, right? <clears throat> so I gotta figure out how is my flow being split what is going towards the west, what is going towards the east, and eventually I will reach my outfall point. You can't just start at this first point and try to make it back up. Yeah, you can do that too, yeah. right? So, let's, let's do that as well. So why did, okay, never mind. Yeah. Why did you cut off, right, when you followed the road down, you cut off the bottom half of the road instead of splitting it? I cut off the bottom half of the road. Like when you came, you didn't follow the road. Yeah, you didn't follow, I didn't follow the road. Right, right, right now, I'm not following the road. We're going to work on that later. But I, right now, I'm only trying to look at contours. Okay? And the reason I tried to cut off here is because if I were to start from the outfall moving upward, that's where I would actually end up at. Right? I would actually end up before the road, like this. Okay? Right now, I'm ignoring the roads, which when you actually get to work, you, you cannot ignore the roads, but we'll work on that later. But essentially, I can eventually reach the same point. So whoever recommended just starting from the bottom and moving up, that's a really good recommendation, right? Because you're gonna end up at the same point. What I have here is my watershed. This area delineated is the watershed, yes. So you don't have to click on every counter or contour point? No, no, it's like you're drawing, yeah. 
you know, you're just drawing kind of, I would click on a contour when I need to change directions, right? You don't have to click on every contour, by the way. I was doing that with the flow path lines just to give an example, but don't, don't click on every contour, it's gonna take forever. Just try to follow it to your best ability. This is a very eyeball thing. Like You need to read the map and kind of see if it looks good. I'm gonna give you an analogy from one of uh, my colleagues' classes. There's always students that have already worked on this before uh, and that they're already experts on these things. But there was one student that, the student did learn to draw watersheds but using an automated tool where you would just play by watershed delineation, click on the point and it would automatically give you the watershed. Now here's the thing, with automated tools, because elevation maps, uh, surface maps are typically uh, point elevations, the watershed may not actually follow the contour lines exactly. It's gonna try to follow the, the point elevations to the best of its ability. So normally, even if you do have an automatic tool, almost always an engineer is actually gonna revise it because it's not gonna be perfect. But the student was kind of cocky, so I was like, no, no, this is the right way, this is the correct way, and refused to actually draw it, right? The student insisted on just using the automatic tool. But they, automatic tools right now we're at a point where they're very helpful to kind of just see what the watershed could look like, but so far nobody really uses them to delineate watersheds. Even for large projects, nobody really uses them. So right now we would only use them to actually have an idea. Yes? What's like the largest area you would have to do this for? It would mean, take a while, right? Yeah, uh, so one thing you can do, for example, uh, like you want to study Mississippi River, for example. You're gonna draw a watershed that starts in Louisiana and ends in freaking like Michigan or something. That's a big watershed, right? Scale. Right. So typically, when it's that big, you're not looking at contours as detailed, right? You're gonna be looking at much simpler contours so you can get a, a, a rough estimate. The precision, or yeah, the precision of the contours really, really, really influences how good your watershed will be. But normally, the bigger the watershed and the lunch precision you're gonna to wanna to use, right? Yeah, it's like, um, yeah. it's like three feet off on a 10 foot thing is a big deal, but a hundred foot, yeah. a bunch of miles, it's not, yeah. you're not gonna notice it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right, so it's like, it really depends on your scale. For for my interns, I remember one, one of the interns I had who now works as a private engineer for me, his first job, I gave him a 42 square mile watershed, okay? And I gave him five foot contours. Now, you may not have a good idea, but 42 square miles, okay? Five foot contours. Um, just because I wanted to train him, right? Because I wanted to train him, I wanted him to be good. Really good, and guess what? He is good, really good. Um, so, but, but really, scale, scaling really depends, right? You, it, it, you really want to know how big your watershed will be, and based on that, you'll, you'll determine what the accuracy of your contours will be. Okay? All right, so now that we have this in mind, I would like for you to start getting some practice. Now, we mentioned roads before. Roads are tricky, but I don't want you to focus on roads now. And we will look at, at how to adjust for roads later. Right now, I want you to focus only on the contours. So if you do open your workshop uh, AutoCAD, I've drawn five drainage points for which I would like for you to draw a watershed. Now I'm gonna start with the easiest one, with the smallest one, and we can do that one together, all of us, but then I'll leave the other four to you, okay? So I'm gonna start with this, yeah, with this tiny one, okay? Let me get rid of that. Oh, this is one hatch. This is my outfall point. Right now, what I know from the contours is that this is my 650 line, this is my 700 line. Let me see if I can find a, a nicer one where I... Uh, yeah, here. This is 650, this is 700. How many contour lines do you see in between the 650 and the 700 line? In between four, so there's gonna be five, right, in total. So that means you have 650, another one, another one, another one, another one, 700. So what is the uh, interval? Okay. 10, 10. 10 feet. Okay, so these are 10 foot contours. So keep that in mind, not 20 like before, 10 foot contours. Okay. Now, if I go to my outfall, I wanna start with this one. You can see that this is the 650 line. 
and this up here is a 700 line. In which direction do you think water is flowing? Is it flowing um, north to south or south to north? What do you think? Looking at the contour lines. South to north. North to south. Okay. So I would say north to south just because for two reasons. One, the contour lines, you can see at the 650 line, these are two maps, by the way, you can tell. You can see at the 650 line, is kind of like down here, and you can see at 700 line, if you follow this line, it's gonna be a little bit higher, which means that water should go from high elevation to lower elevation, right? You can do that, you can try to follow the contour lines. If those don't work for you, maybe you can look at other contour lines around here. You can have the 700 line here, 700 line here, 700 line here, 600 line down here. That's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is the water body has already been drawn. And remember that the flow path, so that can, that can be a water body, the flow path always follows the valleys, not the ridges. The watershed line follows the ridges, the flow path follows the valley. So if you see something like this, water is always going to be traveling in this direction. So in this case, to the south. Okay? So if you see a water body and you see a valley, you know that the water is traveling through that valley, okay? in, the, in the direction where that valley is concave to. So in this case, my water is traveling from north to south. Okay, let's keep that in mind. If you didn't get it at first, it's okay. You have all these different outfalls to practice with, so don't worry about it. I'm gonna start by drawing a polyline. I'm gonna start here at my outfall point, and I can go either direction, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna go to the nearest contour, which is this one. You don't have to do every single contour, by the way, I'm just showing you, okay? From here, in which direction do you think I would go to my next highest contour? Like west. You can tell you can tell me when to stop. Okay, yeah. This almost looks like a ridge, right? And we know that the watershed lines will follow the ridges. Good. And then from here, you can tell me when to stop. Here? Yeah. Okay. Okay, from here I have a problem. First of all, I have two different maps with two different scales. I know that I need to go towards this contour. Can I just draw a line like this? No, I why not? Then you're going to go down enough. Yeah. Exactly. So how would I draw my line then to get to here? Put the yeah, all of the... Yeah, you go split that and then go to... I split that. Okay. Like this. Okay. And then finally I can get to my contour. Again, a little tricky because we have two maps at two different scales. These are two different topographic maps. I guess one of them has 20 foot, one of them has 10 foot. I don't know. And then from here, I can get to this contour. I would draw some lines just to make sure I end up perpendicular to the contour line. You can do this if you want. You don't have to if you don't. Now, I have a problem here. Look at this contour line. Does it go higher? That's a question, right? Does it go higher? It does, but the next higher point is here. So how can I go from this line to the next highest line, which is here? You gotta go split it. You have to go, to go in and then up. Okay, so go in like this and then up. Basically, go to the road. Go to the road? Yeah. Okay. I'll give you a trick, and what we're going to focus on roads later. In general, roads are designed to split watersheds. In general. Not always. Roads typically have a high point at the center, unless they're super elevated. And if we do design a, a road near the top of a watershed, you want it to be at the top of a watershed. Does anybody know why roads would want to be like at the edge of a watershed? Water. Exactly, right? It's less water for them. Road drainage is a very important thing because, first of all, just like two inches of water can actually make your car like hydroplane, right? Six inches of water and your car is taken away, right? So you need your roads to have as little water in them as possible. You good? Okay, I thought you were raising your hand. Um, so if you do see a road, and in this case, I see a road and I know that I have to kind of walk somewhere in between these two contour lines, it's safe to assume that the road will be your limit. You can kind of try to follow the road as closely as possible. Now here, uh, I, I need to think a little bit, okay, I gotta think of what's going on here. Okay. Um, the next highest point was this one, we already agree was this one, and if you look at this contour line, is there any point higher than that? No. no. So this is the high point, which means that I have to end up somehow in here, somehow. You can try to follow the road, and if you or if you feel uncomfortable from that, you can just follow the contour itself. 
We'll talk later about which one will be the correct one and why. Okay. But once I've gotten to the top of my high point, I need to find out where the next high point is. Now in the previous exercise, what I did was I just drew the high points first. But you'll be dealing with larger watersheds with like 10, 20, 30 high points where drawing them first it may actually just end up confusing you even more. So I'm, I'm trying to avoid doing that here, okay? I want to find a way to get from here to whatever my next high point would be. Is there a high point uh, southwest? Southwest? Is that a high point or is that? That is a high point, but I don't think I would want to choose that. Okay. Do you know why? Because it's, it's not going to flow into This right air. here is already flowing off to there anyway. Yeah. Anything that anything that drains towards the northeast is going to end up in this river, and that's somewhere, that's somewhere else. Right? Okay. Anything that drains towards the southwest is also going to end up in this river, and that's somewhere else. Remember, your high point has to have at least part of it draining towards our outfall, and then part of it draining towards somewhere else. I don't want this class to be like a full lecture. You, you keep trying it out. Okay? And it's okay if we don't finish today. We'll have time on the next workshop and the next workshop. So right now, I want you to try to finish this, this one point, and I'll be walking around to see your high points. Yes? Okay, so then we would jump into our own Okay. We like downloaded it with the image today. Yeah. Draw a line on it.